It's a gear tester here, and welcome to my initial impressions review of the Smith & Wesson Model 640. I've owned this little pistol for about a month and a half, and I am very pleased with this little handgun. I've waited about two years to purchase the 640 because I wanted a specific version of the 640. This gun is still manufactured by Smith & Wesson in a very similar format as the one you see here. This is an older 640, and the reason I know that is it does not have the lock here. So there's a little lock on some Smith & Wessons. This is a model, uh, Smith & Wesson Model 63, a 22 long rifle revolver and it has the little lock right there and that allows you to take a little key and lock the gun down. That's a uh, requirement for some modern handguns in some states that are run by people that hate the Second Amendment and want to raise Smith & Wesson's costs and have unnecessary safety features installed on guns that complicate the firearms manufacture and usage. I don't like that, but that's a reality. So I didn't have to have another gun. I have plenty of guns. But if I was going to buy a 640, I wanted to get one that was pre-lock. So I was very happy to purchase this one uh, about a month and a half ago. And I did that because it was pre-lock. I also know that this is an older Smith & Wesson Model 640, or it, I have a hunch that it is, because this one here has a different latch on it than modern Smith & Wessons do. So this is a Smith & Wesson Model 442. This is an airweight, 38 Special, and you can see that it's got an angled cylinder release there, cylinder release lever. It's actually more comfortable to use than this square symmetrical one. That's another thing that leads me to believe that this is an older production Smith & Wesson 640. Smith & Wesson still makes this exact same gun, but it's gonna come with the lock and it's gonna come with that angled cylinder release rather than a symmetrical one. So this gun weighs in at 22 ounces. You can shoot 38 special plus P through it, as well as 357 Magnum. It's really chambered for 357 Magnum, but 38 special is a shorter, less powerful cartridge, so you can also use it in the gun. I'll just tell you right now, I don't like shooting 357 Magnum out of this gun. I find that it is painful. I had a Smith & Wesson Model 60 six or seven years ago, basically this same gun. Okay, this one's chambered in 22 long rifle, but it's the same exact gun chambered in 357 Magnum, and I did not like shooting 357 Magnum in that gun, and this gun is heavier than this one. So it's a little bit smaller, got smaller grips on it, shorter barrel. I don't enjoy shooting 357 Magnum out of these small guns. If I want to shoot 357 Magnum, I'm going to shoot it out of something like this, the Smith & Wesson Model 686P. This gun uh, is a pleasure to shoot, and I like shooting 357 Magnum out of it. It's got a much larger grip. It's a heavier, bigger gun, and if I'm gonna shoot 357 Magnum, this is what I'm gonna shoot it out of. I purchased the 640 because I enjoy carrying this little 442 as a backup handgun. But if I'm honest with you, I really don't like shooting this gun that much. Many people talk about this with these little air weight uh, snubby revolvers from Smith & Wesson. These guns pack a little wallop, pack a lot of recoil. <laughs> Did you not have your... Why don't you shoot while I'm in front of you? That's nice. No. I was off the side of the flash of the barrel. And they can hurt your hand a little bit when you go to shoot them. Especially if you shoot them, you know, 50, 80, 100 rounds out of them in one setting. Um, your hand is hurting substantially, e even 20 rounds for me if I'm honest with you guys. So I thought I'm gonna get this gun and I'm gonna sh train and shoot more with this gun and then carry this one. Um, and indeed shooting 38 Special plus P or 38 Special out of the Smith & Wesson Model 640 is a lot more comfortable and pleasant than out of this little airway gun. What I've discovered here is carrying the two, the differences between carrying the two, there's a reason why Smith & Wesson continues to produce, manufacture, lighter, more compact, uh, easier to conceal guns like the 442. This is way easier to stick in your pocket, put on your ankle than this is. With pocket carry, I didn't notice so much of a difference. So this is the way I carry it here in a little Galco a pocket holster, it fits either one of these. With pocket carry, I didn't notice the additional eight ounces of the 640 that much. It, it slips in my pocket and, you know, it was just fine. However, when it came to ankle carry, if I'm just honest with you guys, 
with the 640 in my ankle rig, I found that when I got home, I took my ankle rig off because it was just more comfortable not have it on. When I'm carrying the 442, the airway, eight ounces lighter, in my ankle rig, I leave it on all day. I put it on in the morning, take it off at night. I was also much more aware that I had the ankle rig on with the 640 in it. It's just because it's that additional eight ounces means that it moves around a lot more. This is a, a Galco ankle glove holster that I've had for two years and worn almost daily. So it's really time to get another one. I can tell the Velcro is loosening up a little bit, but there's just a lot more movement, a lot more what I call slap factor, okay? with the 640. So it's very clear to me why the air weights are more popular than the full stainless steel version. Just because from a carry standpoint, this was a lot more comfortable to carry. This is a lot more comfortable to shoot, okay? So there's just kind of a struggle there. These are both hammerless revolvers. And if you're gonna carry a small compact revolver for self-defense, I really feel that it should be a hammerless version. So the 640 or the 442 or a similar version, this one would be the 640. 42, which is uh, aluminum and a stainless barrel, but exactly the same configuration. If you're gonna carry a small, compact, lightweight revolver, I really think it should be double action only, meaning there is no hammer here to cock. So I have to pull the trigger to the rear. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Which means that you have to be more intentional about staging your trigger, okay, as you go to fire, but you're not gonna get snagged on the hammer as you go to draw it, and you're not gonna be spending time cocking the hammer. You're just gonna draw the gun and shoot. And for a defensive revolver, I feel that this is the configuration that you should have and use and carry. One thing I wanna cover here is a lot of people are gonna roll into this video and say, well, I, I like revolvers or I carry a revolver, or they'll talk about revolvers because revolvers are more reliable than semi-automatic handguns. And, and that may or may not be true. I think too much is made of that fact. As I was shooting this gun here recently, I encountered a malfunction with this gun. I, I think you can make the argument that revolvers on a mechanical level are less prone to having malfunctions than semi-automatic handguns. I'm doing an introductory review here on the Smith & Wesson Model 640, my initial impressions, because I like this gun and I like revolvers. But I'm not unrealistic about the fact that revolvers do encounter malfunctions. Okay, they, they still do. This is a mechanical device, it can encounter malfunctions. And it's just an interesting little learning curve for me here because I think there's a reason why Smith & Wesson moved from this little squared off symmetrical cylinder latch to this angled one like you see here. There, and I encountered the reason here, shooting this gun. I encountered a malfunction. What happened was this, I'm shooting this gun and I'm gonna share with you what happened and then I'll show you the video of what happened. I'm shooting this gun, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I think I shoot a couple shots. What happened was is my thumb, I've got small hands, okay? So if you had big thumbs that are way up here, this isn't likely to happen. But for me, my short little thumb fire, the gun recoiled, I somehow managed to smack the little cylinder release lever here and it popped the cylinder slightly out of battery. So then you can see, I can't get the trigger to pull. So you see me go one, two times and then I, Pop the cylinder back in because I figured that's what had happened and I'm back shooting again. That's a malfunction that's induced by me and by the way I'm holding the gun so I can train, you know, keep my thumb down and do some things, but it's, it's likely that that's something I could encounter. So the chances of that happening are lessened by using this uh, different cylinder release latch, one that's angled forward and that there's less for my thumb to bump into and knock the cylinder open. So Smith & Wesson is seeking to address that in their more recent offerings, okay? So I, I just think that that's interesting. I, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna carry this gun. That doesn't mean I don't trust this gun. That just means that I know, hey, I might encounter that problem and the way to fix it, if I can't get the trigger to move, is to slap that cylinder close again and go back to work if I'm in a defensive situation. So we just need to be aware of the strengths and weaknesses of the tools or weapons we're choosing to carry and use. Much is made when we talk about little snubby revolvers like this, about shooting them inside a jacket. I think way too much time is spent talking about that. I think that's not that useful of a tool, being able to you know, fire it out of like a hooded sweatshirt, having it in your pocket. I, I, I wanna see my sights if at all possible. I think a lot of additional time and energy is spent too much talking about the fact that you can press the muzzle of this gun against something and, and shoot. 
you know, somebody can grab the cylinder and now you, you can't get the gun to, to function either, just like pulling a, a slide back on a semi-auto. So I, I, think, I think these are good guns because of the simplicity. And that's why I like these two. And that's why I purchased about two years ago, this little Ruger uh, LCR and 22 long rifle. Okay, that's why I purchased this one, is because these guns are simple. I can load them up, I can put them in a pocket holster, I can carry them all day, not think about them, and if I need them, um, they're ready to rock and roll. I got Stop! Well, I got super light recoil in the 22. I've got a functional you know, center fire here, and I've got a gun that is more pleasant and more enjoyable to shoot here in the 640. So I like this style of handgun. And if you're thinking about carrying a small compact uh, revolver, I think you should go with some version of one of these or something very similar. No hammer, double action only. I think that's the most effective option and the most successful option for a person that's trying to be armed but have a gun that it takes minimal training to use, operate, and deploy effectively. If you like this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel for more quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. I really like the Smith & Wesson Model 640. I look forward to doing a couple range reports and a full-length review on this gun. Thank you very much for your views and your subscriptions. This is the Gear Tester, signing off.